seance here if you begin with the assumption that she is a fraud. I understand that with the wrong audience, often nothing occurs at all. And then where will we be? One cannot deduce conclusions if there is nothing to observe. Yes. Her name is Mrs. Piper. Mrs. Lenora Piper of Boston, Massachusetts. A large state in that political entity that you persist in calling the colonies. Mrs. Hudson. Oh. Here we present Mr. Sherlock Holmes and his associate, Dr. Watson. Under the circumstances, it may seem superfluous to say we've heard so much about you. I've heard a great deal about you as well, although it seems being in the public eye suits you better than myself. I know little of them firsthand. There. I can hear these rappings as well as you do. Please believe me, not only am I not making these sounds, at least not by any conscious means, as far as I can tell, I don't even control them. Often occur this quickly upon your arrival for a sitting? No, sometimes nothing happens at all. <gasps> Chin up, Mrs. Hudson. Oh, I'm quite all right. The Queen's horses couldn't drive me away. <laughs> <laughs> I feel they want to communicate. Stop now. Inspector, what'd you do the arms? Do you really think there will be writing in there? Well, we know the slates were clean when we tied them. If there is anything at all, we shall have some tangible evidence. I am not concerned with penmanship or literary merit. No spirits yet? Nor if we do, shall we know them in some factor to be spirits. Uh. Ah. Ah, Mrs. Hudson, we must not touch her. She'll be all right. I've seen this before. Mesdames, Messieurs, enchanté. I am Auguste Dupin, detective extraordinaire. This makes no sense at all. You shall die in the mountains, monsieur. Far from your home here on Baker Street. Oh, do not be alarmed. There's nothing you can do about it. It is a fait accompli. I cannot hear your pulse. Perhaps... No. <laughs> Monsieur Dupin, I would say you have no pulse at all, but that seems manifestly absurd. Why? Well, I'll be fine. Odd or even? Madame? Odd. Um. Bien. Hesitation. Feet of clay, Achilles heel, that sort of thing. <laughs> Miss Adler? Or should I say Mrs. Norton? No matter. Inspector, how tall is Mrs. Piper? Five feet, seven inches, but I suggest that is not the only difference between the two ladies, sir. My God, Holmes, there is not a jot of similarity between them. Pressure. I'm the professor. She does not want such confrontation at this time. But even more already is subject to commands from above. Your sham is exposed, madam. There is no one above Moriarty. He is a Z. Height from which he is soon to fall. You shall see. I have informed you as best I can. The rest is up to you. Are you leaving now? Yes, Mr. Doctor. Uh, but the name. You did not tell us the victim's name. Was that James or John? Oh, she looks so pitiful, Doctor. Is she going to be all right? Will she be okay? Uh, she has been through this often enough before, Mrs. Hudson. Before kings and queens, she has. Uh, professor of what? On embellishment of life. Not a condition of it. And so I say, we have much to learn from the roses. And what of the fear and ugliness here in London up to the spirits of someone else? Then the dead are just as far away. No further than before. A stone's throw, a false step, a glass at one's lips with a proper mixture. Death is the closest thing to life itself. But the glass, the burrito water, Holmes. I saw her breathe. My God, Holmes, we have a cast. It's a perfect <laughs> likeness. It is my medical opinion that this cast was formed from the hand of an athletic, middle-aged man.
Very well. <coughs> You're asleep now. Yes. Very good. Now, do you feel anything on your arm right here? No. Are you certain? Now? No. Very good. Oh no, I feel very refreshed. But it is getting late, isn't it? I should return to my friends at the hotel. Too long a visit to the position. We have kept you far too long, Mrs. Piper, and you've been more than curious. I suppose this has become a way of life for you. Oh, I'm fine. I wish all my examiners were as cordial as you gentlemen. And I'm glad. You probably don't know me. On the contrary, Professor Moriarty, I believe it is evident that I do. Do come in. This is my associate, Dr. John Watson. Ah, yes, I've read several of your chronicles, sir. It's a pleasure to meet you at last. I believe this is for you, Professor. <laughs> I'm afraid I do not understand. That is the bill for the sum it would cost to repair the broken window. As you can see, it would have been less costly to send a telegram. I believe there is providence, and there is purpose to it all. Do you see some purpose to all of this? I see none. I want no stalemate now. There are too many pieces on the board. But the rules have changed it, and changed, it seems. I give you my word, I said no letter, and you claim to have sent none to me. We shall each have to repair our own windows. So be it. Mr. Holmes, we shall meet again in a few days. You've met your match! Holmes, for God's sake, Mrs. Hudson is here! Dr. Watson, the pistol! Holmes, calm down! He has been dreaming. A nightmare, I should say. I simply don't know what I'm going to do with the two of you. I simply don't know. Oh, Mrs. Hudson, your old boy had a rough one, that's all. We spent all day making these paraffin casts. I know. Should I know you? Were you involved in one of my cases? <laughs> yes. And no. I have an abiding interest in all your cases. More, I'm afraid, than you realize. How did you get in here? That door was locked. I also have an abiding interest in psychic phenomenon. These irrational raving of the spiritualists are an insult to their fellow man and to the God who created them. Watch yourself, Mr. Holmes. Lest in your vehemence you insult your own creator. I understand you have no small introduction to the effects of certain drugs. You probably have at some time had an experience that you're standing or floating next to your own body, and you look upon your body lying senseless in that chair. Or let us say you had a similar experience in the dentist, dentist chair. I you are nothing. And you, sir, I believe I'm mad. You are nothing but my creation. Do all spiritualists believe themselves to be God, or is this room personal addition to the movement? Miss Adler, Ellen Watson, they're dead, and they were my creations too. Monsieur Dupin is the creation of Edgar Allan Poe. Don't you know that? How do you know what occurred here? <laughs> Mr. Holmes, you might say I've had a hand in everything that's occurred here. <laughs> Let me see that. Of course. The ring, the callus, a perfect match. How did you get in here? Get in? Don't you see? All of this in you shall end when I will it. Your episode with Mrs. Piper did not please me, Mr. Holmes. I did not enjoy your performance. You began to displease me intently. Therefore, you shall simply come to an end. Don't you understand that? 
I understand, sir, that you're making homicidal threats. <laughs> yes. I shall kill you. I shall kill you off and have done with you. <clears throat> you must not. I'll have done with you. You're a very fortunate man, Mr. Holmes. You have met your maker. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get my note? Oh yes, but you haven't opened it. It is in my memoirs there. Have a look. But the note you left for Watson. The note was absolutely genuine. I had no doubt that I had come to the end of my career when I saw Professor Moriarty standing on the narrow path that led to safety. We exchanged some remarks, and I granted him permission to write the short note. Which I left with my walking stick and cigarette case. When we reached the end of the path, I rushed at him and threw my arms around him. I knew my game was up, and I wanted revenge. As you may know, I have some knowledge of Buritsu. Japanese style of wrestling. <laughs> Holmes slipped through my grasp. I clawed at the air, kicked madly for a few seconds, but I could not get my balance. I went over. You smile, sir, but I assure you it really would. It really, sirs. I have far more important affairs to attend to. You stand not in the way of merely an individual, but of a mighty organization, the full extent of which you have yet to realize. You must stand clear, Mr. Doyle, or be trodden underfoot. A duel between you and me. You hope to place me in the dark. I will never stand in the dark. You hope to beat us. You will never beat us. You are clever enough to bring destruction upon me. Rest assured, I shall do the same to you. What is it you want? It's simple, Mr. Doyle. It's so very simple, Doctor. It's elementary, Mr. Doyle. We demand our lives. Well, at the moment, if I may say so, sirs, it seems to me my life that's in some sort of danger. On the contrary, Doctor, you are necessary. And to you, we are as necessary as the air you breathe. The <laughs> compliment. Mr. Doyle, where are we? I don't understand. This isn't your study. Are you all right? Yes. And the address, Mrs. Piper, is 221B Baker Street. <laughs> 